It's cats and dogs that are really nice. Always, always protect you against the virus. The virus the 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 there is a lot of misinformation and confusion out there right now. Let's cut through the noise. Here are some important facts. Testing for antibodies is a standard part of medical decision making. Now laboratories around the world are developing new tests that can detect antibodies to the SARS-CoV-2 virus that causes the COVID-19 disease. These tests can tell us if someone is currently or has been previously infected by this new virus. But there are some important limitations to these tests. With any new clinical test, and in fact with any new test, we first need to understand how useful and effective it really is. Two important measures can help us determine how useful a test is for actions in clinical decision making. We call these measures clinical sensitivity and clinical specificity. For COVID-19 antibody tests, clinical sensitivity tells us if you have been previously infected, then how likely is it that the test will be accurately positive? For example, let's say the clinical sensitivity of a test is 90%. That means nine out of 10 times the test will be positive, meaning that nine out of 10 times the test is right. The test is correct and tells us that you have been infected with the virus. It's a true positive. But that also means one out of 10 times the test will be wrong. The test says you were not infected, but maybe you were actually infected. We call that a false negative. Clinical specificity, on the other hand, looks at the following. If you have not been infected, then how likely is it that the test will be accurately negative? Let's say the test has a clinical specificity of 95%. That means if you have not been infected, 19 out of 20 times the test is right. It is correct and tells us that you are negative. This is a real or true negative. But that also means that one out of 20 times the test will be wrong and say that you were infected when in fact you were not exposed to the virus. We call this a false positive. 95%? That sounds pretty high. It's not though, because one out of 20 for a much larger number of people starts to skew the true picture and it becomes much harder to understand what this really means for the community. Now, these are the minimum FDA requirements for antibody tests, at least 90% sensitivity, which means the ability to detect the presence of antibodies, and 95% specificity, which means the ability to identify their absence. Most doctors and lab professionals will always use tests with specificity rates of 99% or higher, because some tests are better than others. But determining whether an individual test result is accurate is more difficult. This is why you need professionals who are able to interpret the antibody tests. It also means that for you personally, individual antibody test results are not a guarantee that you are immune, because we do not yet know enough about the relationship between positive test results and immune protection. It's also hard to know what your individual result means in the larger context of your community, even if the numbers were accurate for most of the people tested. That's another reason why it's so hard to make the right decisions based on antibody testing alone. 